What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I've noticed that I have a lot of new subscribers, like a lot, a lot of new subscribers. The last video I uploaded went absolutely bonkers. The algorithm caught hold of it and it's still on the rise. It's incredible. So I appreciate all the new subs for everyone taking uh, an interest in all my videos and to everyone who's been with me since the early days, much love. So it is Saturday night. All right, I'm out here doing my runs. My goal today was $200. I'm about $35 shy of hitting that goal. So I figured I'd take you with me as I wrap up the night and then we're gonna head to camp. We're gonna set up, we're gonna chill in the lounge and I'm gonna do a small little Q&A session because I've been getting a lot of questions. I figured it would be a good opportunity to answer a few of those questions and just chill out with you guys. So let's get these orders, let's finish up the night and then we'll head to camp. All right, we already got one. DoorDash, uh, $16 for eight miles. It's perfect. It's $2 per mile. Uh, double pickup, PetSmart first, then Mickey D's. We're heading into North Providence. Let's go. Shopping for a kitty cat. Looking for the gravy lovers. Here it is. Perfect. That's one privileged pussy cat right there. Let's move. All right, so here's what it looks like when I'm scanning the orders inside the app. Put the barcode in the screen, boom, then we're good to go. Follow all the steps, and I have a digital DoorDash card that I use to pay for all the orders. It's like taking candy from a baby. All right, we've secured the cat food. Now we're off to Mickey D's. Let's bounce. All right, so all we need is $15 before we can call it a night. But while we're waiting, let me show you a few offers that I would decline. Let's start with this DoorDash offer. So they're offering $6 for nearly 12 miles. That's an instant decline, so we'll keep that one moving. Then Uber Eats comes in with this offer. All I had to see was $3 before I hit the X on that one. I'm not doing anything for under $5. I don't care how little the mileage is. So we gotta throw these orders in the trash, wait for a good offer to come through. But the good thing is, is that I have a choice. You know, I don't have to take these low ball offers. I can wait for something that's worth my time. All right, we got one to end the night. It's a stacked order with DoorDash, $16 for eight miles. Perfecto, let's go get it.
okay we are done for the night we hit our 200 dollars goal let's go home so the closest walmart to here is about three miles we got to go into massachusetts no problem i've slept at this walmart i don't know how many times uh, but i'm looking forward to jumping back here and chilling out answering a few questions let's boogie Okay, so here we are inside the lounge. We got the boys chilling over here. We got two of them. I don't know where the other two are, but we got Donnie and Raph. We got our fire going, and I wrote down some questions. Now, these are just some of the questions that I've been seeing pop up in the comment section. So let's get into it. All right, so we got our questions here. I'm gonna give you guys some answers. I'm gonna to try to keep the answers short, but I'm also gonna give you links uh, to a few videos that, that'll answer some of these questions in more depth if you're interested, all right? So let's start with the first question. I'm seeing a lot of this one. Bryn, why did you move into your car? So it was an accumulation of poor life choices and destructive drinking over the years, all right? So I'm an alcoholic. Um, I've been struggling with alcohol abuse since I was a teenager and you know when I was younger it started off as more of a social thing I thought this binge drinking was was normal you know the people I was around were binge drinking like all my buddies back in the day and it was just a normal occurrence to to just drink heavily so it started off as a social thing and then you know Kind of into my 20s and into my mid 20s it started to become a medicinal thing right it started to become a coping mechanism i became addicted and um it wasn't until i was in like my late 20s when i actually accepted that, that i was an alcoholic and that i had a problem right but you know all these years of just abusing alcohol and and uh poor life choices and getting into credit card debt um, owing the IRS, just not being responsible with my money. It caught up to me, right? That's, that's the short answer. It, it caught up to me. And uh, I found myself two years ago just in a really tough spot because of my poor life choices. And um, I wanted to do something drastic to turn it around. And I moved into my car. And uh, for the first, I'd say, year and a half of me living in my car, um, I struggled on and off with my drinking. So it, it just... Um, it didn't go away. I thought it would uh, help by moving into my car. I thought to myself, well, the added risk, of course I'm not gonna drink. The thing about addiction is it doesn't really care where you are. If you're not strong mentally, it'll find you wherever you are. And it did, it found me. But anyways, fast forward, I'm eight months sober. That's eight months sober. That's my longest streak of sobriety since I was 16. And, um, we're fighting the good fight, you know? So I'm maintaining my sobriety. Um, what's different about the last, my, my last attempt at it was uh, I pretty much realized that I couldn't do this on my own. 
and I handed my life over to God and I unburdened myself of all the shame and guilt that was coming with all the drinking. I was harboring a lot of resentment towards myself uh, because I just couldn't get a handle on my drinking. And I handed it up to God and I said, pretty much just come into my life and help me, right? So I've got God in my corner now and uh, we're keeping this train moving, but that's the short answer. I moved into my car because I was struggling financially and I was struggling with my drinking and whatnot. So uh, we got to hold on it now though, all right? We got to hold on it now. All right, so question number two, why don't you drive down south during the winter? The main reason is because my son lives here and um, I don't want to leave him, right? So I spend time with my son every week. You know, I pick him up from school twice a week and we do things and we go to the gym, like we're going running tomorrow and we spend time together, spend our holidays together. And that's the main reason. I don't, I don't want to miss that. So um, I stay up here. Another reason is because people don't seem to understand this, but I actually prefer, I prefer the cold to the heat. All right, so um, winter is like my second favorite month, if I'm being honest. I like fall, then I like winter, then I like spring, and then, and then my least favorite is summer, right? I actually prefer the cold weather to uh, the summer. And it's cold here in New England, like it's 28 degrees right now, but it's not like Canada cold, you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes it goes down below zero. I've dealt with that type of weather here before and it's cold as hell, but I was able to survive. I've learned a lot over the past three winters living in my car. Uh, I just prefer staying up here. I, I don't feel the need to travel down south and I wouldn't anyway, because I want to stay close to my son. All right, so we're going to move on to question number three. How do you stay warm and how do you stay cold? All right, so this is one of those questions where I'm gonna give you some links to some videos as well, but I'll, I'll also give you some short answers right now. So I stay warm in the winter by uh, utilizing my engine, right? So the car's running right now, I got nice heat coming in, it's really comfortable in here. And when it's time for bed, I jump into my zero degree mummy bag, I layer up. Uh, sometimes I'll use my hot hands, there are these little pouches that generate heat. And um, you know, I, I just go to sleep and, and that's what keeps me warm, you know? I don't have a heater, I don't need a heater. I don't need a heated blanket. Uh, like I said, it's been three winters now and I've, I've got it pegged. So um, that's the short answer to that. But if you wanna watch this video right here, I go into a lot more detail on the things that I use and I you know show you know video footage of it and everything like that. I'll leave a link for this uh, video down below. I'll leave a link for all these videos down below. Real quick though, guys, I forgot to mention, I always cut the engine off before I go to sleep. I don't sleep with the engine running. Um, I cut the engine off, then I jump into my mummy bag and go to sleep. But also the second part of that third question is, how do you stay cold in the summer? How do you stay cool? Um, again, it's just like little items that I have. I have uh, a portable fan that I plug into my Jackery. I, uh, I spray myself with, with my water bottle right here and uh, sometimes I'll use like a cup of ice. Uh, and again, I, I use my engine. I use the AC and I get it nice and cool in the cabin and uh, I stay cool that way. But again, if you want more detail on that one, watch this video right here um, and I kind of show you a little more of what I have going on to stay cool in the summer. All right, let's move on down to number four. And I've gotten this question a couple of times. Bren, what do you do about a permanent address being that you live in your car? People want to know, like, where do I get my mail and my packages? Um, how do I, you know, sign doc? Like, how do I provide an address for documents like my driver's license, for example, or for when I'm doing my taxes? And what address do I use for all of those things, right? The short answer is I have a UPS box, all right? And I pay $192 every six months. I think it comes down to like 35 bucks a month or something like that. Um, but it's a great, it's a great little uh, thing to have, the UPS box and uh, the great staff at the UPS store. I get my mail and my packages. I've had it for, you know, the past two years. And um, they also give you a legit street address. So on paper, it looks like you live in an apartment somewhere. But again, if you want more information on that, check out this video right here. Um, I go into a lot more detail about that if you're interested. So I use a UPS, uh, UPS box for my permanent address. Let's jump down to question number five, okay? And it says, 
what parking lots are you legally allowed to camp in? Okay, so I'm gonna throw out a few at you right now. So I don't know about the laws, guys. I, I kind of just take my chances and, and uh, I'm, I'm respectful. I, I mind my own business and I practice like stealth camping, as you can see, right? And the other sides of these, these window covers are, are uh, black tape. So you can see that there's something in the window, but it's very discreet, you know what I mean? Uh, but some of the places I've slept in personally are Walmart, hotels, uh, apartment complexes, and cas uh, one casino. I've slept in a casino before. Um, but another few places that you might want to try are truck stops, hospitals. Um, you could also try churches. And Cracker Barrel as well um, is a place where you can sleep overnight and uh, they won't bother you. The thing with Cracker Barrel is I believe you do have to ask the manager for permission uh, before you use their lot and you might even have to eat there as well. But there's nothing wrong with that. Their biscuits are delicious. So you gotta jump in there to Cracker Barrel, get some grub and then go camping, okay? So those are some questions. That's just five questions. I just wanted to you know, shoot off five answers and five questions. Uh, but I just wanted to hang out with you guys back here in the lounge most most of all. All right Sorry guys, I'm gonna interrupt the video one more time. I do have a bonus question for you So somebody had asked if I had ever received a knock while I was in my car Like someone knocking on the window or have the police ever been called or has security ever been called? Or has someone ever tried to break into your car while you were inside? And yes, I did get a knock on the window at a Walmart one time but it wasn't a big deal. It was just another car lifer. And I did make a video about that experience if you do want more detail on that. And I also talk about some self-defense tactics as well. It's kind of funny though, because there's some Ninja Turtle action in there. And um, the other time was at a Hampton Inn Suites. A security guard saw me set up camp, saw me putting up my window covers, and he came over with a flashlight and he told me that I couldn't stay there and he asked me to leave, and so I left with no issues, all right? You know, and that's the thing, like when I'm setting up camp, I'm always looking outside to see who's looking at me. I don't want anybody seeing me set up, so I'm always uh, very cautious of that. Uh, but those are the only two times I had an issue in two years and two months of me living in my car. And the thing about it is, guys, like, you know, if something bad was to happen, right, I would do my best to defend myself. Um, I would, take precaution, but I'm not going to spend my nights and days living in fear of something that I can't control, right? What will be, will be. And um, I trust that everything's going to be all right. And it has been for the most part, right? So I just try to move on with my day and mind my own business. And that's all there is to it. So there's that. And uh, that's going to do it. That's going to do it. So we're going to close the book on that one. All right. Um, I've got my show that I'd like to watch right now. So I've got my pajamas on and uh, me and the turtles here, we're just gonna chill. And I appreciate you guys for watching. And once again, I appreciate all the new subs uh, for following me along on my work days and, and, and everything. I'll try to keep these videos coming at you. And uh, yeah, until next time guys, take it easy.